This is the daily video update for Thursday, November 26th, 2020. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Um, for the daily updates this week, we're continuing the conversation that I had with Lori Stratman about uh, the work that the congregation is doing in terms of racial justice, uh, both in our congregation and in the broader world. And so a lot of the congregation has probably heard about or, or been participating, given our numbers, um, in the Beloved Conversations program. Um, but for those, uh, for those who aren't, um, you know, talk a little bit about what that program is and, and how it relates to the work you're doing on the task force. Sure, absolutely. Um, the Beloved Conversations was actually directive number one, was to get our church involved in, in Beloved Conversations. And this is a program out of the um, Lombard v Meadville uh, Theological School. And it's a program that has been in place for uh, a couple decades now, I believe. And um, this year, they have completely turned it on its head. Um, they've reformatted everything. It used to be a program where a facilitator would come in and work with um, a group of congregants and, and do uh, work towards anti-racism. Um, now it's all virtual. Um, yay, COVID. Um, but, but that has allowed um, a lot more people to participate. So there's over, I believe, um, Reverend Kirsten said there's over 2,000 people now participating in this fall session. Um, and it's, it's structured so that there's, there's three large phases of how this works. So the first phase, which is the phase we're in for this I'm going to call it an academic year because it's kind of academic, um, is the within phase. And that's, so we're doing a lot of work within our own selves, understanding our own um, implicit or complicit um, biases and prejudices, um, understanding um, how, how, whiteness and racism um, um, is, is so embedded in our American culture that we as white people don't even see a lot of it. Um, it's, it's status quo. We don't understand that, that um, you know, some of the things we do are harmful to others. And so a lot of the work is unpackaging that um, and, and understanding our own uh, participation, whether willingly or inadvertently, um, in that uh, continuing oppression and, and harm to, to Black, Indigenous, and people of color. Um, so that's what we're working on right now. Um, we have uh, videos and lessons and uh, things to reflect on um, for, uh, and then we have um, small learning pods. My pod has six people in it and they're, they're people from all over. Um, and uh, we talk about what we're learning and uh, we meet every couple of weeks to do that. And then we have a larger, what's called a meaning making session. And um, the facilitators will have um, uh, videos and discussions um, for, for the large group. Um, mm -hmm. And to help us contextualize what we're, we're learning and, and uh, make it stick a little better, perhaps. Um, and then, um, so once we're done with that, although I don't believe that we are ever done with that, this is a lifetime work, right? But 
once the, the within program is done, then folks who have done the within program are um, invited to do next year's uh, program, which is the amongst. So that's that's congregational work. So we, we move from our, our individual selves to us as a church community and how our church um, has structures and and policies and so forth that may be um, uh, implicitly racist um, and how we can change things up so that um, that is no longer the case. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know what that looks like yet. Um, the, the Love of Conversations facilitators are, are are uh, putting this together as as we are are going through this because this is all new to them as well. But I, I think they're doing an awesome job. Um, the plan is that once once congregations have gone through the amongst, then those who have done the amongst that second phase um, are invited to do the third phase, which is beyond. And that's where we, we move our work out into the community. And um, that I suspect is where we'll see a lot more um, uh, ways to help change, you know, uh, community city policy, um, um, that sort of a thing. So, um, it's, it's a very robust program. Um, I'm learning a lot. Um, and, and I would strongly recommend it for anybody who, who has even the slightest curiosity because um, it, it, the material they're using is so very rich. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm really, it's weird to say I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Because I'm kind of having to look at myself and say, ooh, ouch, that, that was probably not a good move. Um, but but uh, it, it's, it's a good experience. It really is. It yeah. really is. How, how many folks from the Unitarian Church of Lincoln did we end up having participate this fall? We have 42 people from... from uh, our church doing this, which is, is phenomenal. Um, the, the folks I've talked to uh, from other churches, when I tell them we've got 42 people that are participating, they're like, oh my God, how did you get that many people to participate? So I, I'm i really proud, really proud of our church. Yeah, I know I know our pods in Beloved Conversations are not a place for bragging, but that came up the first the first meeting in our pod where we were talking about what's the what's the experience of your church with beloved conversations and I went I don't know we haven't done it yet but there's 40 of us here <laughs> that was that was a good moment that was uh that was a good moment um because yeah. what that means is that's you know probably that's certainly over 10 percent of our membership and that's probably pushing one in five of our sort of active members who we see often. And that's, uh, that gets into critical mass territory pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, Makes my heart happy. <laughs> yeah, usually when we think about this, this work, we think about building up cohorts, right? So you, you train a first five or 10 people and then, and then they bring in five or 10 more people. And then they, over years, um, and uh, and we seem to be starting strong. Um, it'll, I'm I'm curious where this goes next year, um, with uh, mm -hmm. especially with the among piece, um, right? Because right, <laughs> Lori, I imagine you and I will have some conversations during your your board presidency, <laughs> going uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, we signed up for this, I guess. Um, <laughs> 